Hello, and welcome to my pandemonium presentation for 2021. I'm really excited that everybody is here. My session is all about cooking. Just kidding. I wanted to take time to show you how we have found success with a series of simple tools and expectations within Nelnet Business Services. My name is Liz Feller. I am the in-app help administrator for Nelnet Business Services, or NBS, and our company is focused on helping people achieve their educational goals. We have higher ed clients. We have K-12 clients. We do work with nonprofits, churches, businesses, everyone in between worldwide. And we've been using Pendo since 2019, which means we do have a lot of people in Pendo using it on an everyday basis, from operations and training to marketing and sales, and certainly our product teams. We have 10 products onboarded with Pendo with three more on the way. My role as an in-app help administrator is to help make sure that our product teams are onboarded successfully and that their experience is customized to their product goals. We're making sure that all of our Pendo content and communications are consistent in um, a voice and a style that represents NBS well. And I help make sure that our product teams are getting what they need out of Pendo, whether it's troubleshooting, building reports, or helping facilitate collaboration across teams. Today, we're gonna go over three main areas to really illustrate how having a secret sauce or having a really solid process can benefit your company. First, we're gonna discuss the challenges that come with guide volume and communication. We're gonna build a process for content management with specific tools for each step. And then we'll take a look at two very specific use cases for this process and these tools to see how it worked in practice. When I first got into Pendo, I felt like a kid in a candy store. I felt like a chef in this brand new, totally decked out kitchen. It was amazing. I had so many things I got to work with and do, and I was able to really create and be creative with the solutions that we came up specifically for guides. And with that, more people wanted to get involved, which was great because the amount of work for guides was also increasing with all the different things we got to do with it. So as you can imagine, once you have more people in the kitchen, things change, right? There's a different dynamic. Some people will always do the same thing over and over and over. Some won't. Some like to go off the book a little bit. And it can get hard to manage that both guide volume and the volume of guide builders and guide requests if you don't have a process or tools in place. And if you don't have those things in place and if you don't have expectations aligned, you can really end up with a mess. Um, if you send out guides that are broken or guides that have these crazy gifts in them that your customers don't understand, it can really reflect poorly as an experience and really call into question all of the work that you're doing with guides. With 10 products using Pendo, we have over 800 guides public at any time. And this includes announcements and it's across you know, the whole spectrum of what guides are meant to do. With this amount of guide volume and with the number of products that we have for Pendo, we have guide requests coming in from multiple departments. Sometimes they come in in duplicate before our process was put into place. And that made it really hard to make sure we were truly meeting the needs of our internal teams to make these guides. In addition to that, requests would come in multiple different formats or channels. Maybe it's email, maybe it's in passing in the office when we weren't all virtual. Maybe it's a chat, maybe it's a meeting where only some people are involved, but not everyone. This really led to inconsistent information up front about what the guide's objectives were and what was needed to build the guide. And so then that led to meetings and more meetings. Um, there was no tracking or visibility outside of actually being in Pendo looking at guides. And so because we do not have everyone with Pendo logins at NBS, be a thousand people, we're not gonna put everybody in Pendo so they would request a guide and it kind of just went into this nebular space until they heard from somebody that the guide was ready for review, maybe. And then there was really inconsistent notifications and review and testing of our guides, which did lead to some guides going out broken or with typos. And that's always kind of a horror of me. Like I would never want to send something out that then the customer finds something wrong with it. That's not the whole point of guides at all. And then on top of all of this, a lot of the work was very manual. So it really led to an unreasonably heavy workload for anybody trying to build guides within Pendo. With that, I will say we did take 
very big advantage of kind of a built-in life hack that I wanted to share with you. And that was definitely using guide themes and saved guide layouts. So I highly recommend stop trying to find that one guide that you built that one time that kind of does what you're looking to do again and trying to copy it. Just do save layouts and use your guide themes because that is the best way to make a consistent experience and not have to try and recreate things every time that you're trying to do a new guide. So for our process and tool development, we broke down the steps into four main parts. The first being intake. We wanted to make sure that all of the requests were coming in through one kind of singular funnel so that they almost worked like a ticket system. And to accomplish that, we used Microsoft Forms and made it something that could be accessible across our organization. So any of our thousand associates could request a guide and it would be considered to be put into production. Not all of them make it, but this way we were getting consistent information. It was all going to the same place for the same people to view and review. And it really made it easier to make sure we had all the, uh, the necessary information up front before we started building guides. Now with that, I will say it went through a couple of versions and the second version was much better because even though I had this form that people could use, some people would still email in a request. And so our version two was we made email templates and chat templates that would automatically send this form out to them with a little blurb about, hey, you need to use this form instead of emailing without a form request. And that really helped us kind of keep our blinders on for guide building and make sure that we were getting everything we needed in the same place as everyone else. In terms of progress, we really wanted to make sure that once a guide was requested, how could someone check on it without having to have a Pendo login, know what the guide is titled and go check on it themselves. So we connected that Microsoft form to a Microsoft list. And this is also you know, visible organization wide. So anybody can come look on the status of a guide. We can include screenshots. We can include what products that this guide will be displayed in. We can do all sorts of dates and assignments within this list so that it's very visible and it holds us accountable as guide builders and guide reviewers that we are you know, being responsive to those requests and helping others understand without having them needing to go into Pendo themselves and look at things, I would say, out of context. So this has really helped us communicate in a passive way since it is kind of self-service for anybody who requests a guide. And these top two things for intake and being able to show progress have basically eliminated all of my meetings about Pendo guides, which is fantastic because now I don't even have to have meetings. I can just update this list based on the form request and the person who requested it can see it or their manager or someone else who is like, ooh, that's actually a really good idea. I wanna come check on it again in a week. It's been really great. Our next piece of the puzzle was review. We wanted to make sure that all of our guides got some sort of review to make sure that they were not breaking and that the messages inside were accurate and appropriate. To accomplish this with a more automated solution, we actually use Microsoft Power Apps to build a QC tool. So we're ha having all of our guides go through a QC process that looks at the different things and such wording, text padding, do all the buttons work? Do all of the steps work? Are the guide steps responsive? And this is really helping us make sure that our customers are gonna have a really nice experience with all of our guides, regardless of who builds it and regardless of which product it is in. Our final piece was publication. We wanted to make an easy way for our internal teams to know when a guide was going out because the last thing that you want, especially on something like a sales demo, is for a pop-up to come up that you weren't prepared for. <laughs> That's pretty bad. So to accomplish this, again, we're using a Microsoft product, Microsoft Outlook, and we decided to build email groups based on each product using Pendo. And then we were able to include all of the relevant team leads or managers that could then disseminate to their teams what was going on when something was going out and the intended audience that would be impacted. This has really helped um, set expectations and get even getting people excited about the different guides that are going out because they can see how their ideas that they have submitted from that form have come into fruition and really um, helping their own clients 
feel better about their product and use their products better. And you can definitely see, I hope, a common thread here, and that is communication. So by using automated tools and even just simple tools to standardize the data that we're working with, it has really enhanced our communication internally, which is definitely translating outward as well to our external customers. So our first use case, we have a feature release. You can see here on the screen that we use a small little pointing guide to highlight a new feature on this screen. And it's a sort button. It's not anything super you know, exciting, but it was something missing from the screen that was present in other areas. And normally we ask for about two weeks to build a guide just so that we can balance it with other priorities of our jobs because my job is not guide builder, right? Um, we all have other things that we're working on. So this is where having those guide themes and layouts really came in handy because anybody could have come in and built this super quick. And so we saw that by using this process, we were able to actually get the guide built and reviewed and everything else in a day. And then having the guide there on that screen, even though it was small, it had a really great impact on the feature adoption for this feature um, to the point where we use the Pendo experiments tool and we only showed this guide to half of our customers. And we were able to show you know, if we even do a simple tool like this, it's not quite a tool tip because it's a pop-up, but if we point something out using a Pendo guide as a new feature, we can see a tremendous increase in feature adoption because people want to know, you know, and it really speaks to the power, not only of guides, but also the process because it was a successful guide that didn't break, that didn't have anything wrong with it. And it was able to be completed so quickly because of our other pieces of our puzzle. Our other use case is kind of interesting because it was a training opportunity. And sometimes our best ideas come from our operations department. And that's why making sure that our form and our kind of progress tracker, making that visible to everyone in our organization was so important because product doesn't always have all the answers and all the ideas. Um, beyond feature releases, operations really knows the pulse of our external customers and really feels their pain. And so a lot of times, like I said, some of our best ideas for Pendo Guides do come from them. In this example, a lot of our external users, for whatever reason, didn't realize that you can change the year for a report to report on different years in the past. And so this is a guide that we came up with. Again, it's one step, not super simple or not super complicated. It does include a leak to our knowledge base. And um, part of what makes our intake form so powerful is that you don't have to know exactly what you want your guide to say when you're submitting that form. We work with online help. We work with product team to make sure that the messaging inside is just what it needs to be. And that really takes the pressure off of somebody requesting a guide because they can just say, you know, there is something here that needs something and we can help put those pieces together and really make their vision come true. This guide saw a great conversion of users clicking to change the year on the reports, which was great. And the request came in on March 11th. We were able to get it out on March 18th. So it wasn't necessarily tied to a release, but we wanted to make sure we got it out within that two week period because it could impact calls, right? And we actually did see that. So compared to the year before, adjusting for account growth, we actually did see a reduction in calls of 12% about this very specific issue, which is great. So being able to have a way for our operations and our non-product teams to submit ideas and then see how it can come back and impact their team in a positive way has been really phenomenal for our company. And then I get this email, which made my day, which I know may sound a little silly, but this email came from somebody who noticed, you know, there's a team lead who just forwarded Liz's form for intake for Pendo guide requests to 83 other people in our company. And so it's a really powerful message when the work that you've done in the process that you build it gets taken on by someone else, right? And they're sharing the love and they're sharing the excitement of, hey, y'all should request guides because y'all know what our users need and we can get them done and we can see the impact then with our team. So while I'm not an actual professional chef and I'm not winning 
money with Pendo Guides. I know that my team and I have found a lot of incredible success using our tools in this process to manage our guides across our company. And we're gonna keep doing it so we can keep cooking up new ideas to make our work even better.